Okay. Hopefully, hopefully this will pick up enough light that you guys can see me and hear me. Okay, so I was looking back through all the videos and uh, kind of at a glance, this isn't about each and every one of you. This is a general, general statement about what I'm seeing here. <clears throat> and you guys know that uh, you have to remember that you're a creator of God to get this done. Now that is easier said than done. Because everything in your life has taught you that you um, cannot do it alone. That you're a weak human. That the world is full of all kinds of dangers. All kinds of things that can go wrong that you need to protect yourself from. And that in order to even stand a chance at doing this, you have to follow some pretty severe rules. And depending upon the society and how old you are, these rules are constantly changing, which makes it even trickier. So they'll say, okay, well, to be considered a success, uh, let's use women. You've got to be married and have kids. Well, that has changed in my lifetime, so that that is not the definition of a successful woman anymore. A uh, successful man, what, you have to have a, a job and make X amount of money, that you have to follow the laws of the land, um, that if you don't, you are a, you're a danger to the rest of society, that you've been taught that you have to have a certain amount of education, you have to have a certain uh, kind of place to live in, or or you won't be safe, that you can get sick and die, that you can freeze to death, that you can die of starvation or thirst, that, uh, oh, yeah, sorry guys, that um, even people as a general rule have to be ruled over because and there have to be laws that are made because people as a general rule are dangerous to themselves. So all of this and much, much more has created an atmosphere that was perfect to go into the third dimension in the deepest, darkest, densest aspects of the third dimension that were built wholly, primarily on fear. Okay, this led to a very unique experience, a very, very unique experience of contrast, whether or not you were the good guy or the bad guy in this scenario, or whether you changed throughout your lifetime, whether you had it made or, or you didn't, whether you followed the rules and still things didn't work out right, or you didn't follow the rules and things worked out beautifully for you. All of these uh, things that you've been taught over all of this time has led you to the belief of exactly the opposite of your Creator God and you have control over everything. It has taught you exactly the opposite, that you are not a God and that you are at risk, um, you're, you're at risk from everything from every single thing on this planet, including the weather, the animals, the plants, the other humans, everything you're at risk for. And what people have done over time is they've developed all of these rules, all of these books, all of these ways of dealing with this uh, extremely dangerous place. And they say, if you follow these rules, then you will uh, be okay. However, these rules are always always being broken and people will follow the rules and still bad things happen to them like the saying uh, bad things happen to good people that's that's where that comes so the question is uh, how to get y'all to understand wholly and completely without a doubt the gods that you are okay well to just simply say say you're a god uh, that's probably not going to work and um, I don't think it has. I think a year and a half later, 500 videos, me just saying that is not good enough. So where is our problem stemming from? Well, um, a lot of times, let's, let's um, deal with people, but specifically women of my age bracket anyway, that we were taught um, to be quiet, to be subservient, that the men were in charge, that somebody has to be in charge and God deemed that men were to be in charge. Therefore, we were also taught to get along, to be quiet, that if you spoke up, you were considered a bitch and a troublemaker, that you would not find a mate, nor would you have children, which was the uh, definition of a successful woman uh, when I was growing up. So, 
Um, here is what I was taught, and I'm assuming a great many more women and or men for that matter were taught, that it is better to be quiet, to get along, to just follow the rules, and you'll be okay. Okay, you may not uh, be at the top of the heap, but you will be okay if you just follow the rules. Now, the side effect and what happened in this is that I see this a lot with a lot of people, especially a lot of females, is that when I start talking about your Creator God and be your authentic self, uh, people are very much like I was. Well, what does that mean? I had spent so much of my life, as a matter of fact, all of it, being what other people wanted me to be or what their idea of success was or what the rules were that... Um, I followed the rules because it was safer and it was a scary place out there and I didn't I wanted to live as safely as I could so I found as many rules as I could and I followed them to the T still didn't work because what I didn't know is law of attraction works and by living in fear I was just drawing more bad things to happen to me which led me into even more fear which caused me to follow even more rules which led to even more worried that I wasn't following enough rules and there you go over decades and decades of time there was no longer a me in here anywhere it didn't start out being a me um, I was taught from very very small in church that um, that I was supposed to do what my husband said or my father said or whoever the man in the group was <clears throat> and that it was my job to um, take care of the house and be a good cook and raise the children according to the man's rules and that I basically uh, my job was to pick the man and uh, my job was to pick a man who I liked their rules the best and then to follow them so there was never a time and a place whenever I was being raised or growing up where I was taught to be myself in any way, shape, or form. That was never, ever even said. As a matter of fact, quite the opposite was true. I was taught that to be yourself and to just follow your own feelings and your own desires was straight up a sinner and that you would go straight to hell for that. But undoubtedly, if I just followed what I wanted, my worldly <laughs> wants and desires, that that would be um, uh, the equivalent of just signing myself straight up into hell. Because the whole deal was for me not to be what I wanted to be, but rather what God wanted me to be. And what God wanted me to be was to follow the leadership of the man in my life. Now, I'm not complaining about this. This is what I signed up for. It was a part of the 3D game. But where it became an issue was after I died and came back out of it. Now, in order for me to get back out of 3D, back to 5D and beyond, I have to figure out who I am. I've got to start over like I was a little tiny kid, only I've been taught a completely different way of thinking. And in this thinking... I am now going to teach myself that I am a creator God, that everything that I say, do, and think is under my control, that all of this is my doing, that my wants and desires are valid and important, and as far as I'm concerned, they are the most important thing to me. It is my job. So I have to start over. What does that mean? Well, the first thing I did was I went and made a list, and I said, okay, this is what my life looks like now. And I went through that list of the job and the place that I lived and uh, basic concepts of life, just the basic ones. And I went through them and I decided, do you like this or do you not like this? I made it really, really simple. Uh, I was a nurse. Did I like that? Did I not like that? I did not like that. Uh, do I like the hours that I was working. I did not like that. Uh, I did not like uh, the interaction between me and my job and the people I interacted with. It was not fun to me. So I did not like that. Um, I, didn't li I did not like being identified. <laughs> it's going to be fun, isn't it, guys? I did not like having to identify myself as heterosexual or homosexual. Um, not that 
I'm one or the other. It's just, I just didn't like that. And that led me to understanding that I didn't like labels. That I wanted to be able to be free to change my mind at any time. And the other thing is that I realized that I was a good person. That I was an honorable person. That I was a just person. That if left to my own devices under normal circumstances, I was capable of making the right decisions. Not only that, but I really looked around my life over years and years, and I generally saw that people as a whole were good people. And most of the time, the people around me had been good people. So I started to question the rules about whether or not there's a need for a government that's regimented and, and heavy with, with laws. That it seemed like that if you really wanted to get around the law, there was always a way around it. So what was the point of having the law? And that I trusted more in me looking eye to eye with someone and interacting with them in that one-on-one -on -one way rather than um, being supportive of a country or a city or a county where there were a great deal of laws and that there were um, uh, most of the time men that were running around with weapons that were going to bonk you on the head and other men that took you in a court of law if you did something wrong and decided whether or not to lock you in a cage forever and ever based on what you had done. None of this looked like it was working. None of it had looked like it had worked. And as a general rule in my neighborhood and those immediately around me, I did not find it necessary. And I thought that this was not working for me. So gen generally, basically, I went through all of the big ticket items and decided the things that I could quickly and easily decide what I liked and what I did not like. I, uh, I don't like to have to get up every morning, do my hair and put makeup on to go to the grocery store, but I like to dress up every so often and go somewhere fancy. I went down and I th went through moment to moment the stuff that I had that I had organized in my life, the things that I had followed the rules on, what had worked and what hadn't, and I became very, very honest with myself, not because of what society said, not because of what I had been taught, but because in my gut, in my soul, did it feel good, whatever those things were. So I would suggest to you that you start out by making a list, and you want to make it as complex as you can get to, down to as much stuff as you can if you don't know what you do like you at least can make a list of what you don't like I assure you you can you just came out of 3d so the first thing you do is stop is get rid of as much stuff as you can that you just absolutely do not like some other way of of getting around it like for instance I don't like to um, spend money. I did not like when I did this. I did not like to spend money. I don't like to pay bills. Well, the way around that was it was the computer age, so I could set up automatic payment for uh, for these things. And whoops, where am I? I could uh, make the payments come out of my account automatically, and that got rid of part of what the problem is. So I could change jobs. I could, um, I, I decided that really being in a relationship with a man was not working for me. For whatever the reason, I was not successful at that. I was not good at, at choosing the right one. So for now, that kind of scenario was not the most important thing to me. I did not like the feeling that I needed to be in a relationship in order to be successful to be happy I didn't like that um, I, I don't believe that I think that for me I felt like I needed to be able to be happy alone before I could take my happiness to a relationship where we could be happy together that I did not want to be with a guy who needed me to be happy so I wasn't about to take unhappy me into a relationship and expect them to make me happy. So I opted away from that 
to choose to become happy first and then see where the relationship thing headed. I'm not adverse to relationships. I love being in a relationship. I love being married. I love being a couple. I love sex. I love holding hands. I love going and doing stuff together. I love all of that. But not at the risk of putting it, <clears throat> making that relationship be the thing that needed to be there in order to make me happy. I needed to do it some other way. The same was true with my job. I did not want a job that I needed to do this job in order to be happy. That I started ruling out all of these things, uh, being a mother. I, I didn't want to be a successful mother in order to be happy. So I started ruling things out that way first. And I got rid of the ones that were the easy to get rid of, and then I started going into the more difficult ones. And I just kept doing it. And what I would do is I would say, well, this doesn't make me happy, but I don't know what will. So I'm going to remove this. Now, how do I feel? Well, I feel a little bit of relief. Okay. So what do I want to do instead of that? Well, let me try this, and let me try this, and let me try this. And I started filling in with other things. If the, the thing that I brought in made me feel worse than I felt upon removing the previous thing, then I removed it. I said, no, 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 that's not it. That's not what makes me happy. And I am old enough with enough experience that once I started getting rid of the belief systems, the rest of it became a lot easier. Once I got rid of the, um, the fact that I don't need a big house and a new car every um, every year I don't need to be in a relationship. I don't need to have kids or grandkids. I don't need to be uh, have a successful career. I don't need to make a certain amount of money. When I got rid of all of that stuff, the rest of it became a lot easier. Now, I'm not saying that any of that stuff you should get rid of. I'm saying that's, that's what I got rid of for me. Now, it may make you incredibly happy to be a... a uh, a car washer then be a car washer but that's what I mean you've got to get the belief systems out of your head and be really really clear on what makes you happy not what you've been taught that will make you happy but what will truly make you happy until you get to the, that point the rest of this is a waste of time guys it's a waste of time so you have to go through and you have to get rid of all the belief systems. Now, once I got rid of all the belief systems, how do I live? How do I live moment to moment? Well, I had to come up with a way, and I'm still doing it, that I could make... Well, first of all, I got rid of... I, I downsized big time. Because a lot of the stuff that they said I needed, I didn't want. I didn't need the big house and the new car. I didn't need X amount of money in the bank. I didn't need these clothes or that jewelry. I got rid of a lot of that, and that got rid of a lot of my expenses. Okay? I'm not saying get rid of expenses. I'm saying that's what it did it for me. Because I would rather be free than have stuff. But if your thing is stuff, and you don't mind working 68 hours a week because you enjoy the stuff that much there's nothing wrong with that guys go for it i'm just telling you what i did and for me i didn't like having to be at a certain place at a certain time and do what other people told me to do i really didn't want to be told what to do especially since i had been taught for all these decades that this was the this was the way to success and in reality it made me more and more unhappy so I started getting rid of the stuff and getting rid of the expenses, which lowered my need for income, which opened me up for some space, some actual physical time, where I could think about this more and more. I went more and more into a meditative state. Now, once you start getting rid of what you don't need or you don't believe or what doesn't make you happy, then you've got to start finding what does make you happy. Okay, so that is a matter of, like I said, fill in the blank. Now, all of those belief systems, you have to start there because I've told you guys to get out of 3D, even though the guy is out of 3D, you can be in, in 3D. You can be there by being in fear. Fear is also worry. If you're worried over whether or not you're five pounds too heavy, you're in fear. You're in 3D. If you're worried over whether or not you're going to be able to make the house payment next month, you are, 
that is a worry that is fear you are living in fear in those moments you are in 3d you've got to get rid of the fear and the worry no matter what level of fear it is whether it's a mild worry as to whether or not these shoes are going to be good to walk in the mall when you meet your friend or whether or not it is are you going to lose your job tomorrow doesn't matter which level of fear it is fear is fear is still the vibration of fear and you have to get rid of that no matter what so that's first steps now on a lot of this and i've gone through this and i just reiterated it with you guys again I've also told you all over and over again, get rid of fear, get rid of fear. You can't get out of 3D, certainly cannot get to 5D unless you get rid of the fear and the worry. But for whatever reason, that fear and worry is still there with a lot, a lot of people. Now what I'm feeling, whenever I sense this out, is that in order to give up all of these things that have been told to people, these belief systems that that in order to be safe and secure and happy, you need to do X, Y, and Z. In order to let go of X, Y, and Z, people already need to have A, B, C in front of them. Except that doesn't work. Because my A, B, C and your A, B, C is going to be completely different. And until you remove the fears and the belief systems to make space so that you can see what it is that will make you happy that will keep you out of fear. So how you do this, little by little, step by step, a lot of people that I'm talking to don't, don't wanna do the little tiny baby steps work of it all. They want a, a book that they can buy and it's got 100 steps, do this and this and this and this, and then you'll be fine. Except that's never worked, it never has and it won't work again. How you got into 3D is unique to you, and how you get out will be unique to you. And the first st steps of that are very monotonous. They're very repetitive. You have to do it over and over again, and you will fail over and over again. But that's okay. That's okay. You will find what works for you and what doesn't, and the more you find what works for you, the more you'll do it, the more you'll do it, the better you'll get at it, and the more you'll find even more stuff that works for you. But what I'm seeing is this inability or, or <clears throat> unwillingness to be committed enough to get to 5D that you're willing to risk letting go of the old belief systems. The old belief systems did not work. They worked really well to get people in fear and in 3D. But if you want to do something other than that, then they aren't going to work at all. You cannot do the same thing that you did to get to 3D to, do, to get to 5D. This is a completely different direction. It's a different way of doing things. Okay? So, how do you get out of this fear and worry? Well, you do it every moment of every day, and you put it above all else. And I've told you guys this. No matter what, nothing gets between you and your happier. And even if you're having an unhappy day, you do whatever it takes to find a way that you can be a little bit happier and over time over and over again it will get easier and easier and easier it's gotten much easier for me over the last after over the last year certainly the first uh, six seven years was very difficult but I was alone doing this too very confused very alone and um, still unsure about how all of it played together um, hopefully you don't feel alone anymore. You've certainly got me and you've got everyone else on this side. And people are much more willing to talk about it now. But the question is, how committed are you and how badly do you want to get out of this? Some people want to do it gradually, that they're not comfortable, that it's more fear for them to make sudden dramatic changes in their life. Then there are people like me that slow non-dramatic changes just wears on me it causes me more worry i would like i would rather do massive changes so i can actually see myself doing something different how you do it is up to you there is not a more right way and more wrong way there is only your way and your way is right for you 
And you have to get to the point where you let go of fear and worry. That you let go of society's rules and religion's rules on how you fulfill you. That that is unique to you and you have to figure it out. And you have to figure it out first and foremost by being completely honest with yourself. So you don't play like um, where society says, well, you know, you, you've got to smile at the checkout counter lady even if you're in a really bad mood. Well, I say, no, you don't. That that's not being your authentic self. It does not help your, your you or the the other person. Now, you don't need to be rude, but you don't need to fake happiness. Fake happiness, joy, and love is what's caused so much confusion on this planet already. The only way is to start being authentic in your reactions. Without being mean, without being hateful, without being rude, just don't be fake. If you're sad, and somebody says, how are you feeling today? Say, I'm just sad. And they say, is there anything I can do? And you say, no, I got this. I realize that I'm sad. And it'll, it'll pass. It always does. Just be honest about how you're feeling. Because it's only in your honesty about how you're feeling that you can improve and get to a better space. It's only in, in being honest about what you enjoy and what you like for you to find what you truly love. If you're lying to yourself and everyone else about how you feel and what you love, then how do you ever expect to find what really, really gives you true blissful joy to get you out of, out of 4D into 5D? It starts with being truthful to yourself. You don't have to convince anybody else about it. It's between you and you. There's no point in lying to you about what you are feeling and what is working or what is not working. You don't need to explain to me why um, being in a uh, committed relationship is your idea of getting you to 5D. If that's what works for you and it's truly not a codependent issue but rather a camaraderie issue I'm for it 100% if you can do it without needing someone but just just because you want a partner in crime to go hang out with fine it is in the vibration behind these things that makes the difference okay so how do you go the next step further you've got what I've done done and now you're still stuck. What are you stuck on? Well, you got to figure out why you're stuck and what you're stuck on. Most of the time, you're stuck on attachments. So now you've got to try and find your attachments. I first thought that it would be better to get rid of your worry and fear and then deal with attachments. But a lot of people I'm seeing are not letting go of their fear and their worry because of the attachments. So you're going to have to do the attachments first. Again, you're going to have to figure out what you need to do for you. <clears throat> so if you're attached to being a son or daughter to the point that your life is controlled 100% by what your parents need at any given time, then this is an attachment that you need to, you need to get rid of. Because they aren't really your parents. they You aren't really their son and daughter. It's just a role that you're playing in a very, very good play, very vivid video machine, video game. Okay? If you being a parent consumes all of your life and you're busy running your children's life to the point that you have no life, you have no room for you to be happy and joyful, but that you're... you're making them do stuff so that you can live vicariously through them because there's no room for you to be happy about anything, then that's an attachment that you need to get rid of. If the only way that you can be happy is by being at work, but this job stresses at you out to the max, the people around you bring you down and you're exhausted and worn out, you're on blood pressure pills, you've had a stroke three times in the last five years, then this is an attachment that you need to get rid of. Okay? And you need to go through each and every attachment in your life. Now, <clears throat> people like me and Sandy, we pretty much just cold turkey left it all and started over that nothing in my life, and I think she'd pretty much say the same thing about hers, nothing in my life was working. 
None of it was bringing me happiness, bliss, or giving me any kind of authentic joy, even for a split second. So for me, I think for that sort of thing, it was almost easy. I could be assured that everything in my life was not doing it for me, so I could leave it all behind. Now, I think a lot of people would find that shocking, that you could leave the job, the mate, the parents, the family, the friends, the job, the money, the whatever, the house. But when none of it is working, it's really not that hard to walk away from. And from my perspective, I have had such a difficult life that up until, and certainly including dying and coming back, the, there wasn't anything I was really afraid of at that point. I had been homeless. I had had very little food. I had had very little money. I had been in no relationship. I had had no support. I have had many jobs, no jobs. I mean, I have been all the way across the spectrum, and I knew that no matter what, <clears throat> that I would always find a way. That things would always seem to work out. May not be happiness, but I would still, everything would work out. And at this stage in my game now is, well, what's the worst case scenario? I die. Well, that's not a worst case scenario for me. That's a yay, I get to go home. So now I've got even less fear. So now I can check mark everything that was in my life. I can walk away from all of it and start something new that I've never tried before, one at a time, and gauge how well it went up against what I had just left behind. And that's what I've done over the last 10 years. It's just, this works, this doesn't. I feel better, this one doesn't. I'm still feeling fear here, I need to deal with that. Oh, I've got an attachment there, I need to get rid of that. Because I am a creator God, and I create all of this, and all of this is based on vibration. Vibration is, the vibration goes out to the law of the universe, law of attraction in the universe, and things are created around me based on the vibration that I send out. Therefore, it doesn't matter the exact details of how it works out. If I want to be happy, all I've got to do is vibrate happy, and the universe will create things around me that will make continual things happen to keep me in that vibration. That's the long and the short of it. And I'm not willing to... Well, I don't believe anything that humans have said. I am... Uh, in a couple weeks, I'll be 59 years old. I have yet to see anything that they've said uh, work out the way they've said it was. Um, there are rules on doing this and you'll be a success or you'll be happy or you'll have joy and bliss and forever happily ever after. None of it has worked. And I followed all of their rules. I was really, really big into the rules thing. Followed all of them and it did not work at all. So it's really easy for me to say, well, you've had your chance. Um, you've had like five decades of chance. I'm going to try it this way. Number one, because I've been dead, I know I may not know exactly how to do this. I may not know exactly how to fly the plane, but at least I have I have been at the manufacturing plant. I've read the book. I've met the authors, wrote the book. Now it's just a matter of practicing here. And for one thing for sure is you guys do not know how to fly the plane either. So I'm not going to copy people that don't know what they're doing. I'm going to at least try to follow people who, have, who are doing it well. And since I don't know anybody who's doing it well, I'm going to just try to do it step by step my own way. All right, so I don't know exactly if this video accomplished what I wanted it to accomplish, but hopefully um, it can reach out to some of you guys so that you can see where you're stuck and see where you need to move on from now. Uh, big time, big time. Uh, attachments are huge. You've got to get rid of those attachments, guys. And the reason why you're attached to things is because you've judged them to be good or bad. That judging things as good or bad, it's got to go too. Because uh, uh, when you do that, you're doing it for other people, 
really, more than anything. You're saying, okay, well, I judge this to be a bad thing, and you're doing it, therefore you're bad. To go to 5D, there's got to be an understanding and acceptance that all of us are creator gods. We're all a part of the whole. I am you, you are me, and the way that you do it will be perfect for you. It can't be anything but that. And to get busy on the, on the business of me creating for me and getting to a happier, happier place. Okay? All right, that's it for today. I love you guys so much. Huge hugs, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.